Hey everybody, it's Matt Shu at Upright Health and I'm here with my buddy Creepy Vincent and today we are going to be talking with you about something called the Stinchfield Test. And this is basically a, a movement screen. This is a, an, a little special physical test that gets used in the medical community to try to verify whether or not your hip pain is coming from inside your hip joint. So whether it's something like arthritis or a cyst or a labral tear, the Stinchfield test is supposed to or is believed to tell you or give you some reliable indication that your problem is actually coming from inside the hip joint. So first I wanna show you what this, the test looks like and I wanna preface this by saying I am not a medical practitioner, I do not do this test and I frankly think it's actually not that useful at all. But in any case, we're gonna have Vincent let uh, his legs out straight like this and we're gonna be testing his left hip. So we're gonna pretend that he has left hip pain and in the Stinchfield test, basically what Vincent's gonna do is lift his leg up. Depending on the source, um, you will see reports of either going to 20 degrees of hip flexion or going all the way up to like 45 degrees of hip flexion and then I apply resistance down. Right, so whether it's here and I apply downward pressure or he puts it here and I apply downward pressure and he resists, that's the test. If it produces pain at the front of his hip, then that's supposed to mean that his hip pain is coming from inside the hip joint. That's the stinch, Stinchfield test. So for any of you who are massage therapists or trainers, you might be thinking that's a little bit crazy because there's a lot of things that could cause you pain when you're doing that. For example, you could have muscles up here, like the rectus femoris, the TFL. There are a bunch of muscles there that all connect that could potentially not feel comfortable doing that specific position. How'd that feel for you, Vincent? Okay. Felt okay, no issue. Well, let's do it on the other side. Let's see. Let's go ahead and lift it up to like, let's go 30 degrees. We'll split the difference. And then I'm gonna resist you. You resist me. Any pain there? Feels fine. Feels fine, okay. Well, he passed the test. So Stinchfield test on Vincent, no problem. Supposedly, no uh, intra-articular problems, no pain generators coming from inside his hip. So what's really interesting about this is the research on the Stinchfield test actually shows it's not anywhere near as useful as people believe. So we're gonna provide the link to the study that's, uh, that was done um, that looked at a whole bunch of different hip tests. And what you'll find is that the Stinchfield test is basically useless. So when you're looking at it, um, you'll find that it has a sensitivity rate that has, that's fairly low. It's below 80%. I couldn't get the full number from the text yet, but it was fairly low. So it doesn't even catch everybody who has um, uh, intra-articular hip problems. And its specificity, which is the more important number for tests like this, is extremely low. So the specificity number on the Cinchfield test is actually at 32%, which means it has an extremely high rate of false positives. And that is a really disturbing number because that means, like I told you earlier, it could be telling you that somebody has an intra-articular hip problem when they really don't. Okay, so the false positive rate is extremely, extremely important when you're thinking about a movement screen like this, when you're thinking about a special test. If it has a low specificity, it's giving you bad information. If it's telling you, it's, it's highly likely anyway, that it's giving you bad information when you're doing that test and getting positive results. What's more interesting is in this study, they actually um, calculated the sensitivity and specificity using another test, which was a hip injection, to determine whether or not the test was even accurate. And they assumed that the hip injection itself was going to be um, a valid indicator of the right answer. When in fact, the injections have been shown in other research to also have pretty shaky evidence for being specific enough to tell you that kind of information. So you actually have injections that themselves don't have um, very high specificity ratings backed by much evidence. And I'll provide a link for that in the uh, description as well. Te as, a, as a verifying test for something like the Stinchfield test, and even with that shaky gold standard of injections, the Stinchfield test still shows up having a really high false positive rate and itself not being all that accurate. Now, all these tests, even if they have high sensitivities, even if they, 
you know, if they say something like, oh, it's got a high sensitivity, that means it has a really high rate of returning a positive response. And if it has that low spe specificity, that means you have a really high rate of false positives. So high sensitivity and a low specificity means you have a really, really useful test in scaring people into thinking they've got something that they don't actually have. So guys, I hope this video gives you a little bit of a different perspective on the Stinchfield test and a different perspective on a lot of physical tests because the specificities on all of these things tend to be really, really low, which means you're getting a ton of false positives, which, which means as decision-making tools, they're not really that great. Another thing I'd like to add is, is the reason why I didn't feel any pain when Matt was pushing down on my leg is because I have the strength and coordination to, to lift my leg up against resistance that way. But I, I can easily see how if I didn't, then I would be totally compensating. And I could feel a pinching right here or a pinching right here. And I definitely would have in my younger days when I didn't have the strength and coordination. Right. So it's really, right, the, the, the test then, if I feel pain here, that doesn't tell me anything right. besides I don't know how to do this motion properly without you know, pain. It's like a, a, a squat. If someone can't squat very deep and you make them squat super deep, there may not necessarily be anything wrong with, their hips or whatever they just don't know how to do it they don't have the strength or right. coordination to do it that's that's it plain and, and it simple. hurts yep. and it hurts so okay that, that could mean so many things yeah so guys definitely look into this think about this perspective there's all these muscles around the hip joint if they don't function well together things are going to feel uncomfortable that's not a particularly controversial statement a test like this doesn't isolate out all of the muscles that are involved. So if you don't have the strength and coordination to fight with this and you start compensating and twisting or your pelvis needs to do something or different muscles that aren't well suited to that activity kick in, it's not going to feel good. That doesn't mean necessarily that there's something wrong with the joint. And as you can see from the research, which you can go ahead and read, go down to this description section and check out, um, you know, the test just gives you false positives left and right. So it's not really telling you that much information. So as you're down in the description section, please remember to subscribe to our channel. Um, check us out on Facebook so you don't miss any of our videos. And uh, if you've got hip problems, you're looking for a way to retrain your hip muscles, definitely check out the FAI Fix. All the descriptions are going to be down below. So check those out. And please remember always that pain sucks. Well, I shouldn't. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, share, and comment, and don't forget to subscribe.